Hey, folks, boy, what a program we got today. Look what's happening with silver. Just before we went on the air, it went up around 28.85. And now they, I guess they, they jumped it back down or pushed it back down again. But we know how they're doing it. They're actually using what are called naked paper shorts. We know the game. We'll be touching on that a little bit later on in the program here today as we visit with the U.S. debt clock. But what I'd like to do, first of all, is I'd like to bring your attention to this. This is absolutely sickening. Look at this, folks. Company that made millions of defective sleep apnea machines ordered to overhaul ma manufacturing. The company responsible for a global recall of sleep apnea machines will be barred from resuming operations in U.S. facilities until it meets a number of safety requirements under a long-awaited settlement announced Tuesday by federal officials. Phillips would be required to overhaul its manufacturing and quality control systems to hire independent experts to vet the changes according to a court order announced by the U.S. Department of Justice. The company must also continue to replace, repair, or provide refunds to all U.S. customers who got the defective devices. What was defective about it? This is going to scare you. Look at this. Come on now. We're, we're not we're not a developing country. We're a third world. Come on now. Where is our man? Where is our checks and balances? Phillips has recalled more than five million of the machines since 2001 because their internal foam can break down over time, leading users to inhale tiny particles and fumes while they sleep. Nice. Efforts to repair or replace the machines have been plagued by delays that have frustrated regulators and patients in the U.S. and other countries. You're going to do that to us on top of taking the land out from underneath our feet? I think we've had enough. Okay, folks, now we're getting into it. I'm rolling up the sleeves. We're going to get into it, daggone it. We're going to talk about Poglovian taxes that you're paying and you don't even know anything about it, do you? Have you ever heard the word Poglovian? We're going to talk about it. So Poglovian taxes right up there was right down there with sin taxes. What in the world are we talking about here? This is going to be wild. I hope you speed, I hope you slow it down to 0.75 because gosh darn it, there is a lot going on and you guys do not know anything about this stuff. The key difference between a Poglovian tax seeks primarily to minimize negative externalities. But how do you quantify that? I guess it quantified enough to dump in enough taxes on us. Um when sin taxes typically seek to provide or reduce negative internalities, such as smoking and that kind of thing. Then we're going to talk a little bit about estate taxes. For some of you that are left over and have assets left, left inside of an irrevocable trust, you're going to find out that you at the highest taxes, uh, tax bracket at 37% with less than $13,000 in income coming into an irrevocable trust. We're going to be talking about that too. So let's get into the sin tax versus Bolivian taxes here. A lot of work went into this today. I want you to know this. Poglovian tax is similar to a sin tax, which also imposes costs on socially harmed for goods or services. But a sin tax is designed to discourage internalities and negative effects by occurring by the user. Lung cancer is an example of internally born cigarette smokers. OK, a cigarette tax can be born both a sin tax and Poglovian tax because the sin tax is affecting you yourself, giving you cancer. But the other thing is Poglovian tax gets, it gets you um, the air scrubbed out of the bar that used to be in when they allowed smoking inside of cigarette inside of uh, bars and restaurants. So they had these smoke meter machines up there. Well, there's a mandate and they had to put these things in. Again, that was a tax. Where did that come from? It got added to your beer, your price of beer, your, your, your wing order, or whatever else. I've had enough of this, folks. Look, you're going to learn a lot here today. And you, you may not like what you're going to learn, but daggone it, people want to know this stuff internationally. Guess what else? Do you think that you're the only one to know this information? Folks, do me a favor. Hit the like, subscribe, and share button. We're trying to get this message out to so many other platforms right now being shut down. The truth is being shut down, and you guys know the truth. You're going to have to help me get it out. What did Trump have to do? He had to well overcome all the ankle biters out there and overcome whatever kind of shenanigans they could pull off in the voting machines. He had to show the public, daggone it, I am the guy. Look at all the millions of people following me. You guys needed to do the same thing. These you need to, uh, I, I think if you're out there and you're providing a service to the public and they're giving you the right to be able to talk to the public, then I think you need to be doing a public service. Am I right or am I wrong? So another Poglovian tax, a cigarette tax discourages smokers from engaging in a habit that will cause a harmful internality, such as lung cancer. It also uses tax dollars to fund campaigns that educate people about the dangers of lung cancer, such as sm secondhand smoke. We talked about that in the restaurant. Another Pavlovian tax common in Europe, hey, it's making its way over here, folks, is a tax on plastic bags. Come on. And sometimes even paper bags. How are we going to grow groceries home from the store? Come on. What, they want to use cloth bags and bring it home? What, this is, a, this is the 21st century, folks. We're not bringing burlap bags and walk into the market. Uh-uh. Come on, folks. This is crazy. 
and sometimes even paper bags. This encourages consumers to bring their own reusable bags from home to discourage the use of paper and plastic. Plastic is a byproduct of burning fossil fuels. Is plastic a product of burning fossil fuels or cracking the fossil fuels and then further refining? I have to look into that one. I don't know. I think you got to look at a lot of this stuff with John's eye. Calculating a Pavilion tax is notoriously difficult to get right. <laughs> what has the government gotten right? Uh, in theory, the amount of tax should be equally, exactly equal to the net cost of externality that seeks to remedy. Like, for instance, you're smoking sm cigarettes inside of a restaurant. What's it going to cost to get rid of the sm secondhand cigarette smoke so other people don't have to breathe in the stuff that you're causing, breathe in and give you cancer in the first place? Hey, isn't that interesting? Look at the pack of price of cigarettes. That's gone up so much. How many of you are seeing people smoking outside anymore? No. Uh. -uh. And additionally, because these taxes are the same across the board, it affects the poor people more, uh, more, um, more disproportionately because they have fewer income, a lot less income to be able to spend on the cigarette taxes. Right. So all these are really helping to push down the poor and poor and poor. We talked about pawn shops the other day. They pushed them down so far that fifth far that 15 to 20 percent of Americans can't even get a daggone uh, account. So they have to deal with pawnbrokers and they have to pawn mama's uh, or grandma's silverware or a vase that was left to them. Sad folks. This has got to go. I'm tired of 151 taxes on a loaf of bread. I'm tired of all these daggone taxes. We don't have anything to do about. Listen to this one. This is going to floor you. How about this? Are you guys getting a, a renewal letter for your for your homeowner's insurance? Well, you better read the daggone fine print. I'm going to read you the fine print on this one. To our policyholders. Look at this. To our policy. This is a Pagovian tax. Watch. Thank you for the opportunity to provide your insurance protection. Your policy is expiring soon. Surprise! Here we go. Your state requires we notify you prior to your policy's expiration form to ensure you have changes that will take effect upon the policy's renewal. Like you have a whole lot of choices at that point, right? Your general liability will include an amendment to the recording and distribution of material or information in violation of law violations. Ooh, goodness. So if you break the law doing something, your homeowner's insurance doesn't have to pay out? Uh-oh. Ding, 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 ding. We better stop this nonsense. Look, you got to get this message out on other platforms, folks. You got to help me. We're doing all we can, and we're not having a whole lot of luck. We need a lot of people to reach out to these other pod stations that you're listening to now because they're not listening to me because I'm telling a message that maybe is against the supporters of the station or whatever. So anyway, your general liability will include an amendment. I just said this to recording and distribution of material or information in violation of law. Who's to say? What law? We're going to decline your claim until it's proven that you weren't in violation of the law. Your excess liability will include an amendment to the recording distribution of material or information in violation of law exclusion. Are you real comfortable with that? Go ahead, send us your four thousand a year for your homeowners for your homeowners insurance premiums. We'll let you know we're going to cover it or if we're going to cover if and when you get a claim. Your general liability will include a cyber liability exclusion. Folks, I'm not making this up. You can't make this stuff up. This is creative as all get out. These people need to write cartoons. Your excess liability will include a cyber liability exclusion. Interesting. Is this going to affect also the umbrella coverages as well? Your commercial property coverage for all of you that have businesses out there will include a nuclear, biological, chemical, and radiological <laughs> Quadruple X exclusion. Your business income and extra expense coverage will include a mileage radius for civil authority coverage. How about that? So what is a syntax? What's the difference? We're going through a lot here. We got a lot to cover because somebody challenged me. One of our friends challenged us to a, a, a little uh, debate, I guess. Uh, what coin is more popular in the world? Is it the American silver eagle or is it the, um, the maple leaf up in Canada, the silver maple leaf? I got data. I got raw data. You're you're playing with Ted, international Toastmaster champion at James Madison University, 1980. Look it up. Anyway, sin tax is levied against specific activity or good that is deemed to be harmful to individuals or society, such as tobacco, alcohol, drugs, candies, and among other things. These goods normally generate an attractive amount of revenue, which is why state governments tend to favor sin taxes on to generate revenue. Sin taxes are a form of excise or select. We're going to talk about excise taxes. When I first got into estate planning, I was stunned, absolutely stunned. I found out that there was an excise tax on leftover IRAs, that when you add in the excise tax for the insurance, all the other taxes, are you wound up with 105% of the taxes levied on the leftover IRA. So if you had an IRA with $100,000 in it, pre-tax, 
you're going to have to pay 105,000 for your beneficiaries to inherit it. Isn't that nice? We got that taken care of. Matter of fact, we had we had something in effect that said that no law can make um, the the uh, a tax more than 100 percent of the value of the, what it is taxing in the first place. Isn't that nice? That's the best we could do. Reduce it down to 100 <laughs> percent. Sin taxes are levied to both the federal and the state level. States um, sin tax advocates believe that these additional charges discourage people from partaking in harmful activities. Really? OK, well, they probably do work. OK, what at the. I find is most unusual, though, is what they contribute, conti what they consider to be a syntax. Now, we're not talking about syntax the way you form a sentence, okay? Uh, S-I-N-T-A-X. Okay, let's not get real cute here, all right? So look, look at these examples of syntaxes. Folks, daggone it, we're going to put this up on the website. How about tickets for a cruise is a syntax? Tickets for air travel, a syntax? Tickets uh, tax on jet fuel, there's a syntax? Firearms, syntax, highway tractor, syntax, fuel for heavy trucks to get your stuff from the manufacturer to your shelves, tires to make the wheels go around, boat motors, fishing gear for those of you boaters out there. That's a sin. Catch fish? Golly, can't have fresh fish in here. Gasoline. Who is shocked by this? Who isn't telling you about this, folks? Come on. We got to raise a voice, okay? They're going to keep putting crap and crap and crap on top of us until we stand up. Now, how are you going to learn to stand up? you got to have somebody like me out there telling you what's happening. Somebody that get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, bust their butt, uncover this stuff. And, of course, there's a heck of a lot of money in this, right? No, constitutional silver and dimes and junk silver and eagles are rock bottom. There isn't any commission left in that. There is, it, 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 it's a pass-through at this point because it's so hard to get and so finite. And the, are they making any more type ones? They stopped making them in, in the early part of 2021. Let me ask you this. Are they making any more type twos? They stopped making that March 1st of 2024. There are no more silver eagles being made, folks. Do you get it? They know what's going on. They know we're waking up everybody and there's no more money being made. The only money that you can make, you pick up is that that's already been made and it's in high demand. Now, we were able to get 100 bags of dimes shipped into Golden Eagle Coins. I got my finger on that. I know what's going on, folks. One person called up and said, I'll take 40 bags. $40,000 a face amount of dimes. I think somebody sees the forest from the trees, don't you? How about another one called 33 bags of dimes? Holy cow, there's 73 bags of dimes gone out of 100. Try to find these things. I'm telling you, scarce as hen's teeth, people. They really are. So anyway, as Pagovian tax, as far as I'm concerned, it's got to go. We got to vote these people out that are voting these taxes in. Okay. Now, Grant, as far as cigarettes and that kind of stuff is concerned, yeah, I'm not really a cigarette fan. I, I, I smoked a little bit when I was in college. It wasn't one of my thing. It stunk and uh, made your clothes stink. And I didn't care for that at all. So, anyway, now who said Walmart the other day? Yeah, I go to Walmart too. I had to put on my pants the same way as you do. $12.48 for a pack of cigarettes. And that's before you add all the taxes onto it additionally. But do you think there are any taxes that are already added into that $12 pack of cigarettes? I would say yes. So listen, folks, some of you are real smart and some of you uh, are trying to get up to speed here. What I have here is I'd like you to download this call or office or whatever. You need to understand what's going on. OK, Austrian monetary economics is all about you. OK, it's you and what you can do and what you can bring to the table. All right. I suggest you get a copy of this and read it because otherwise what I'm talking about as far as Pavlovian taxes and excise taxes won't make sense to you because Austrian monetary economics divorces the taxes from us. We decide that we can do our own uh, managing of our own funds better than the government can. Now, if you believe the government can do it, then let's take a look at Keynesian economics. We've got a little bit of a glare here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this guy, John Maynard Keynes, boy, may he rest in where I hope he just rests. He's done. His work's done. Anyway, bottom line, this is all about government intervention. OK, so until you until you understand the differences between Keynesian economics and Austrian monetary economics, I think you're going to get stuck in the rest of everybody else wondering why the bond rates are doing this, why the interest rates are doing that. Matter of fact, we talked a little bit about the bond rates in the very beginning, something that I wanted to touch on as far as um, we have an inverted yield curve going on. So let me pull that back up here a second. Do you know where that sheet is there, honey, that we used to open the show with? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, you're going to see that the two-year interest rate is higher than the 10-year. 
is that normal? Shouldn't the longer interest rates carry a higher interest uh, carry a higher interest rate along with it? Besides, if you're really smart, why wouldn't you borrow the money, say, 30 years, which is even lower than a 10 year and pay it off in six months or one year or two years or whatever? At least have the money locked in. So what we're seeing here, folks, is you see how the 10 year, OK, the 10 year, the two year bond is four point nine three three. That is up. Are you seeing this down at the bottom here? And the 10 year bond is lower than the two year, which is also up as well. Four point five. I suggest you take a close look at this because this is a barometer telling you what's going on. So Powell came out and he said, oh, we're going to keep interest rates the same. Who believes that? Interest rates are going up in this area. They're going down in others. Now, Rafi Farber, I respect a whole lot. He and I are the same daggone school of economic theory. Austrian monetary economics rocks. It rules. That's where we are. OK, so uh, Rafi was talking about the same sort of thing about the inv inverted bond yield curve. And uh, it simply just makes no sense. So how in the world did the U.S. Become, get the world reserve currency status in the first place? Well, let's explain that. Let's explore that a little bit. The rest of the world was embroiled in World War II before Japan got us involved in, with their strike on us out there in Hawaii. OK, so we were not being invaded at the time. Our manufacturing facilities were being bombed. Our allies needed tanks and airplanes and guns and bullets and all that stuff. So we started making it for our allies. And what they did was they got the gold out of the country some, through something called Operation Fish. Look it up. It's really cool. Basically, it was the way that the, the Europeans would get their money out of the vaults that, that uh, Hitler was marching into with his tanks and everything to bust the vaults open and take all the gold. OK, what happened? The word of that got out. And France found out what's going on and France and, and uh, England got together and they said, look, we got to get our, our gold out of here. Besides, what are we going to do with it? We got to pay for war of stuff anyway. So what they did in the middle of the night, they put it in cod boxes. So a long time ago, when you when you bought cod, codfish, it was it was packed in salt and it was put in a, a wooden box and it was shipped across the Atlantic Ocean. And it was distributed food here in the United States. OK, so what does the operation was called Operation Fish. And so what they did in the middle of the night, they took and loaded up the boxes with gold bars and got the gold out of the way so Hitler wouldn't be able to get it. So Hitler realized what was happening with this. He sent his U-boats over to, try to sink all the boats that were coming from Europe over into the, the United States for the, for the metal to be the money, the gold, the silver, to be either shipped up to Canada, a repository up there, to be able to be used for additional war efforts that we here in the United States were making. So we built Fort Knox in order to take all this gold in, all right? So we're making this stuff hand over fist and hand over fist. They were sending us all the gold they sent and the extra that we didn't need to be paid for what we were doing. They sent that up to Canada. OK, it's called Operation Fish. If gold wasn't that important, would they even bother with it? If gold wasn't that important and silver wasn't that important, why are the countries measuring their wealth with it? Are they measuring their wealth with, with specific gold coin from 1922 that uh, is pretty to stamp this particular way? What kind of value, what kind of fungibility does that have? Does it match any other funds? No, folks. No, I, what I'm seeing is you're being let in with one hand and you got the bait and switch with the other. Come on in, talk to us. We know all about taxes, all this kind of stuff. Come on. Oh, you got to watch out for that pre-65. I mean, the 1933 uh, confiscation. Yes, they did confiscate in that period of time, but that's because we were on a silver and gold standard, at that more of a gold standard at that time. Then as soon as they confiscated it from you at $20 an ounce, they marked it back up to $35 an ounce and paid the bills with it you, okay, that they just got from you. The government is not your friend, folks. I'm here trying to be your friend. And a lot of you, I am your friend. I've had some great conversations with a number of you. And it's so warm. It, it's wonderful. Talking to people. As I was on the phone with somebody from uh, from Arizona here this morning. And we got friends reaching out to us from our, uh, from uh, Australia. I wanted to take a look and see whether or not they really got snakes running around their lambs over there. And they got to run them down lawnmowers. <laughs> I thought that'd be really cool to show you all. But anyway, they don't want you to see that. Or is it really happening? Hey, if you're in Australia, do you really have snakes running around your lawn? You got to watch out where you're going. And if you go in the water, is it really true that there's a, um, a jellyfish the size of your thumbnail that could kill you if it touches you? I got to find this stuff out before I come over to your country and visit. You can come to my country. It's safe. So how did the dollar become the world reserve currency? Well, we were correcting all the gold and all the silver because we were building the war machine for the rest of the world. They, well, United States got all the gold. Let's give them the world reserve currency. So we took it away from the country that had it before, which is England. So, so as far as your um, uh, getting back to Pigovian and taxes, how does this affect you as stackers? Well, a lot of you are, are sort of missing the boat. You're getting involved in gold and silver, and you're buying as cheaply as you can. Folks, it's not an investment. You're trying to buy it cheap. 
Okay, you can buy it cheap if you want, and it'll go up, which it is, but then you'll have to pay taxes on it when you sell it to use it. And I don't like that idea because in the event, did you, anybody remember something called the windfalls profit tax? Anybody remember that back in the 70s when the oil companies made so daggone much money, or maybe it was the 80s, that they whacked them with a windfalls profit tax? Does anybody remember that? We don't want that to happen to us. So as long as you're holding the money of your country and don't let a coin shop tell you that there's no difference between constitutional money and bars and rounds, there is a difference. First of all, it's spelled differently. OK, so pre 65 dimes, quarters, half dollars, dollars is where you want to be. Type one eagles where you want to be beyond that. When all that's gone, we're going to have to go to type one gold eagles at that point, folks. And then um, uh, fractionals, which is going to be very expensive. A tenth ounce right now will run you about 400 bucks for a type one American gold eagle, one tenth ounce. They so multiply that times 10 is four thousand dollars an ounce. It's a little too rich for my blood. So as far as you that have um, that have bars or whatever that you want to swap. Now, when the time comes, you might have a you know a vault full of thousand ounce bars or kilo bars. We're going to do with it. You can take it in a store. No, you actually need the corner of the realm. We've been dealing with people that are going to help you out in the beginning. They'd shit. They'd explain this to you and rather than just try to sell you whatever's coming out of the mind as fast as they can get it out of the mind. But a uh, billion dollars a year in Dory bars going after you guys per year. Eh, that's going to end. So anyway, those Dory bars have got to find their way back into the uh, into the processing system, and they're going to be used for for uh, for consumption, industrial purposes, or what I think it's going to be used for is coins and money for, uh, from around the world. But those Dory bars, they have to be further refined. You know, a refiner that will take them in? Yeah, you have 50 bars. And they're not going to mess with 50 bars. They need thousands of bars. They've got a big kiln they've got to heat it up with, okay? And they got to boil it and get it all the impurities out, and they got to finish they got to finish refining it. And when you buy a Dory bar, it's not finished. So when you buy a Dory bar and it says it's a thousand ounces, guess what? It's not. You've been ripped off. Sorry about that. But <laughs> you got to know now. Now, if you go back to them and say, look, does Dory bar really weigh a thousand ounces? Ask them to just grab one indiscriminately and videotape, do a live stream. Okay. What's that called? FaceTime. 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 Okay. Do a FaceTime with them. And you pick out the bar you want to have weighed and ask them to put that on the scale and watch it come up at 950, 980 ounces. It's not going to come up to a thousand, but you got billed for a thousand. I don't like that. Do you? So anyway, you can send these things um, to go currently Golden Eagle Coin will accept these bars. They have places they can send it to that will further refine it and get it actually into the system and they'll pay a fair price for it. So if you need any help with that, reach out to me, uh, Ted at TedSpeaks.net. Uh, you can also reach out to bars at TedSpeaks.net. I don't know how many of you out there want to get this problem taken care of, but you got to have the coin of the realm. Holding a thousand ounce bar is like walking around with, a, oh my gosh, something that's completely unnegotiable. You're, you're driving around with Rolls Royce trying to get it you know, covered. We accept this as payment. Yeah, I'll take that. Sure. How are you going to make change for it? That's why the dimes are important. For those of you that are real smart, you'll figure out that dimes are less expensive than type one eagles or actually type two eagles right now. And the smarter thing to do would be to buy the dimes because there's 14 of them to an ounce. That means you can make change. You can divide up the purchase of 14 uh, purchases. You can divide it announced into 14 different segments. Now, for those of you that see the, the forest from the wall, from, from the trees, you're like, hey, why don't I get more dimes and help out other people when it comes time? They don't have time to make change. They don't have the ability to make change. So what you can do, since you know that 14 equals one troy ounce, why don't you offer 12? And you keep a vig, a, a, the difference. It's a little small profit. OK, it's called a VIG uh, between the, the 12 and the 14 that it actually cost you. So good ideas, things to collect. So anyway, your collector's tax. How many of you are buying silver and then going back to the same coin dealer and they're, they're sell, you're selling it back to them? They're giving you the cash and then you take the cash after you receive the notice that's going off to the IRS and use the cash to buy more silver. That's not fair. Are any of you guys having that happen to you? Because the places that I know, they'll take your metal in in one form and they'll swap it and give you a negotiable form on the other hand. So that that's a friend, folks. OK, if you don't have a coin dealer, that's a friend. They need to find a coin dealer. That's a friend. So as far as I'm concerned, Golden Eagle will do that. I don't know about Miles Franklin. They're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, I have reached out to Andy and um, I sent him an email a while back. I reached out to just about everybody you can think of. We need to get the truth out to these people. But Andy, if you'll take the bars in, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, there are a number of bars that are out there and the people want to swap them for something that's much more divisible that is the money and the coin of the realm. So if you can help them out, please reach out to me. Again, my email address, Andy, is ted at tedspeaks.net. It's right on the internet here. If you uh, give me a jingle, I'd, be, I'd love to talk to you. I think our heads are in the same direction. You can swap bars for eagles without generating a taxable event. Did you know that? 
usually up to your local coin store. It's their policy. You just avoided a tax. So why are smart people stacking money of their country? Because they don't have to pay the taxes. If you happen to hold a bar that has a serial number to it, at least in the state of Maryland, I understand Florida repealed these laws, but in a number of states, you might want to find out if you are holding bars, your bar has a serial number on it. That bar may need to be held by the person you're negotiating it with for a period of up to eight, 14 days before they find out whether or not the bar was stolen by after having filed a police report. You see the kind of problems here? Okay. So then after they get the report back that the bar is clean, then they can negotiate it. But how many, how many coin dealers are going to lock up $23,000 in a vault, see whether or not they can keep the $23,000 bar. They got to return it. And then after uh, putting the $23,000 out and giving it to you and you're walking down the street, then they got to do something in 23,000 and turn it into something, make money with it. So anyway, uh, you need to, you need to get as close to the source as absolutely possible. And by doing so, you don't need to build a dory bar that needs to go into a refiner and needs to go into a, you know, a smelting process and all that jazz made planchets and stamped into the coin of your realm and your country. I think we just keep it a lot simpler, folks. OK, besides the time is nigh. Look what's happening right now. Silver hit 20, 2885 today. Next stop is 29, then 30, then 35, then 50. We're going to have market stops in the way. But while this is a circuit, a circuit breaker, it, it'll stop the market for a while. Let the, the activity catch up, let it get a breathing event. So it's like that's what happens when it goes down. Right. Is that a free market? Is that an open market? Or is that a managed market? Is that part of Keynesian economic activity or is that part of Austrian monetary activity? No, uh -uh. we got government's got to stay out of the way or for a free market to, to function. You got to stay out of the way. You got to get the people that have special interests out of the way. The people that are creating the currency, they have the special interest. How about Nancy Pelosi on what? One hundred forty some thousand dollar year salary. She winds up retiring with one hundred forty million dollars. How come all these guys come in dirt poor and they leave so wealthy? Is that because they're taking not only your money, your benefits, your retirement, but then they're using the stock market because they're manipulating by certain policies in a certain way to be able to crash the stock or make it go up. And then they do it, what's the only way to go up and they beat you to it. Now that is called insider trading for the rest of it's illegal, but for the politicians, I guess it's okay. So when we approach the end that we're close right now, we're very close. All right. You're going to see and expect different capital controls. That's why I want to talk to you today. For those of you that are still hanging in here, I want you to understand this because this is going to happen. All right. They're going to start locking down your money in ways that you have no idea how they can do. So um, there, your access to cash is going to be restricted. Your access to credit is going to be restricted. It's going to be they want to do the same thing that they did during the Great Depression to you today. That's what they want to do. And it's not like it's they had they don't have any practice at it. They have 89 examples that I showed you over on my table. Why don't we just take another glance over there right now? Because we do have um, a currency reset in process. And what I want to do is show you what the heck is going on. OK, so here is my currency collection. For those of you the regular followers, you've seen this before. And if those of you the regular followers, you'll see that I've hidden something inside these stacks of uh, the funk currency notes here. OK, this is what happens to all currency notes around the world, bar none. It's been happening since time immemorial. OK, and it's happening again right now. OK, now, if any of you have a particular unit you want me to see, pick up. But you can see that each one of these has a unique identifier. And some of these, they printed so many of them, they even ran out of ink. True. So they only printed it on one side. But look, it still has a unique identifier up there, 118084, right? You see that? Then what happens, they actually ran out of paper. They did run out of paper, and they were printing the uh, the notes on bamboo. So how much longer to your dollar bills, either digital or printed, winds up on my table defunct like this? And what do you think the banks are going to do? Are they going to keep the silver? Are they going to keep your purchasing power? Yes, that's how the banks get wealthy. Okay. So what you're actually doing is you're exchanging your purchasing power, your labor, for the currency of the realm. Okay, now you should be exchanging it for money. Okay, look at these two notes here. The top one says United States note, the bottom one says Federal Reserve note. Is there a difference? Is there a difference between the United States and the Federal Reserve? Well, if you don't know that yet, we need to go over and take a look at the BIS.org. That is what's happening right now. The Bank for International Settlements is being removed as being the sole money pr provider to the globe. And what's going to happen in return is each country will have their own sovereign currency backed up by the money that's been returned to them that had been eviscerated from them the, over the, uh, the many, many years. OK, so 
Anyway, you tell that I'm on fire, I'm on fire. The more I find out about it, how much do you think a loaf of bread would cost if we didn't have 151 taxes on it? That is crazy, folks, crazy. I think it is. So capital, capital controls are designed to keep you locked into the system. Okay, that's the idea. Purchasing power is yours. It's actually your purchasing power is given to you by God. Okay, it was called a talent. All right, we learned that from Dr. Pastor Norris Belcher over Church of the Open Door on Sunday. So a talent is what each one of us has been given. It's our, it's our job to develop that talent and use it to serve other people. So no man's an island. I mean, I know a lot about taxes, investments, but I don't know a lot about electricity. It scares the daylights out of me, to be honest with you. And I don't know anything about building houses or painting walls or anything else like that. So each one of us has got to rely on others. But if one person lies, then, then it upsets the apple cart because then I don't get the value I need to pay you. Okay. And you don't get the value you need to pay whoever else. We have to have a true open platform where only truth is spoken. OK, so if I'm the only one out there speaking truth in some areas and I'm not able to get it out, then why are these other stations not putting this on? I don't understand. Maybe you can help me out with that. So what is a bail in? Now, you remember back in uh, back in 2008, we had the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Basically, the bank came to the government and said, look, you get a two and a half trillion dollars. We're going to close up shop and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. And what happened was the mutual funds broke the buck. So you put a dollar in a, in a money market mutual fund. It's always supposed to be a dollar. Well, what happened was it broke the buck. It went below a dollar. So you put money in a money market mutual fund and it wasn't the dollar that you put in. So had that happened, there'd have been such a rush on the whole globe financial market, everything would have crashed. So the United States government says, okay, fine, here's two and a half trillion dollars. Keep it simple. So what did they do? Well, some of them needed it. Some of them didn't need it. Bottom line is they kept it anyway. So now we're in the same ball, uh, boat again. And now the government is saying, no, we're, no, we're not going to do any more bailouts. We're going to do a bail in. Go to the website. Nick just put it up. There's talk on the website, a video that was captured. One of you guys out there. I love you guys. I really do. Thanks so much. We could not be doing this without you. There are so many people volunteering. Ben, taking care of the merchandise, is a volunteer. Cindy, taking care of the upcoming um, Silver Show that we're putting together. She's a volunteer. Uh, Nick, he's working hard. He's discounted whatever he's do doing by about 50%. Who else do we have in here? That's Oh, Tina. Tina's helping out. Who else? Oh. Carl. Carl's out. And then the other guy. That's Charlie. Charlie. Charlie's helping out. Yep. So everybody is volunteering their time. Thank you very much. If you have time on your hands, please reach out to Margaret Ann. If there's a way that you can find time in your day to help out somehow, whether it's reach, picking up a phone or sending an email, asking another podcaster, hey, can you please host a TED chat for us? We think there's a message that your listeners would want to hear because their audience needs to hear the same message you do. God bless you that you were able to get it. So the Britain Woods Accord basically is the accord that was put together in order to take over the, the global reserve or the world reserve currency for, uh, slot from England. And so we took it over and now we've been running with it and we've run with it a fairly long time as fiat. So because the world reserve currency is now fiat and all the currencies on the face of the planet are fiat, now's the perfect time to remove all fiat and get rid of the BIS.org. Okay. And that's what's happening. So if you're holding real money, you don't need any currency, okay? You don't need a facsimile of what it is either. You need to be holding what is real, okay? You need to hold it in your hand. Don't trust anybody else with it. Don't put it in a safe deposit box. I suggest you put a, a mattress over top of these boxes of these things. Be a little lumpy for a while and don't tell anybody you have it. I do not see a Mad Max scenario happening. Please don't happen. No, this is a very well thought out, well engineered plan. I just happen to know what's happening. And I just trying to help you so that when we get to the other side, you have a decent size estate to be able to plan. I said that a couple of times, but the only way you're going to get out of this, the other side is if you're holding real money that you own in your own possession. It's the money of your country because that can't be inflated away. It can't be digitized away from you. It can't be tokenized away from you. It can't be normalized away from you, whatever. Just get it in your own hands, folks. And you're going to find it's very, very hard to find. We still get a line on it right now. Again, please, folks, if you're listening, understand that the money of your country is most important. You'll spend a little bit more for it with your fiat redeemable dollars for it currently. OK, but don't look at silver as getting the cheapest that you can get. Otherwise, you're going to get what you pay for. By the same token, you don't need a seven thousand dollar quarter ounce uh, uh, thing of gold or whatever. 
Uh -uh. You need something that people are going to look up on the Internet. Say, oh, yeah. OK, there's lots of these around. I'll take these. So there's been over 650 million American Silver Eagles produced since they first began creating them back in 1986. And when did the um, Maple Leaf get started? I think it was 1988. I think the U.S. might have you beat there. OK, guys, that's all right. We're still going to have fun. When we get together. Well, maybe we'll have a drinking contest or something. You'll have to drink five beers to my two. So social engineering tax is how the public is gently manipulated. Think about this. It's all so subtle you don't even feel it. Oh, well, let's tax a cigarette. Well, I'm not going to smoke those anymore. Or, oh, I think I'll give up smoking or maybe I won't smoke at all or maybe I'll smoke one a day or something like that. They're changing your behavior. Now, if your income is $20,000 a year, or fifty, whatever it is, and the cigarette tax is the same for everyone, obviously then poor people are going to have a greater percentage of their income taken by these new taxes. So where do these new taxes go? Well, Nancy Pelosi's worth $140 million and, you know, take a look at these other ones. So, um, so what are some social engineering taxes that are good? What good can come from a social engineering tax? Well, how about offering a tax break to families? We need children, folks. We have to make 2.2 children per couple in order simply to maintain our population. 2.2 because the 0.2 will represent things that, that may not that, that may not allow them to continue to live a full life. Maybe they pass on early. Maybe they have some kind of disease or problem, whatever else. But if we're not increasing our population by 2.2, we're going backwards and we're not. So we need to incentivize the younger couple that are still fertile and want to have families and want to have little children to grow up and love them and respect them. Uh, we, we need to provide an economic incentive for those people to do that. And you don't do it by whacking them over the head. And that's what's been happening here. The people that have been encouraged to have as many children as possible, those that, that are on welfare and that kind of thing, you're going to get the same amount. You actually get more because of the family size. Well, we have to have tax breaks for people that are out there working hard and you're putting your kids through college. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to put your kids through college and get a higher education. If you get a certain, certain grade point average and reach certain standardized criteria and as far as grades are concerned, and the investment is a good investment, and the knowledge of the gaining is worthwhile as opposed to the history of rock and roll or Beatles or whatever, get the master's degree in that, that's stupid. Okay. So anyway, call it what it is. Again, we talked about 151 loaves of taxes on one loaf of bread. I don't know about you, but I think bread would be a whole lot cheaper if we just simply got rid of the Bank for International Settlements altogether. So different types of taxes. Americans are paying income taxes. The same systems owns everything, including printing press for fake dollar. How about that? If they can print money to pay for wars and whatever they want, why can't they print the money to take care of the taxes you want us to pay? Why can't we live fuller, better lives? Why do we have to have so much trouble between uh, husbands and wives and relationships that money gets involved? You know, the money is the number one cause of divorce. Isn't that sad? There is nothing for, you don't get something for nothing. These fat cats driving around and, and motoring around in 400 foot yachts and that kind of stuff, burning thousands of dollars of diesel an hour. Well, that is your power, purchasing power that have taken away from you very systematically, very subversively, but they've done it. And now what I'm doing is I'm raising the flag and we need help. We need this message to get out to as many people as possible. Please like, share, subscribe, get it out, get the message out. The only way we're going to make all this stuff go away is if we stick together. If we don't stick together, they're going to keep the pressure on us. Okay. And then we talked about an excise tax An excise tax simply is a tax because, Hey, you know what? I think the public has too much of this. Let's throw a tax their way. It's called an excise tax folks. Okay. It was levied on leftover IRAs, was leftover excise tax. It helped to add to the tax liability of a leftover IRA. Would have been a whole lot better to leave your assets to your family. What percentage of your assets would you want your family to inherit? 100%? If you don't have a good estate plan, it's not going to happen. Now, we're not going to talk about estate planning until we get the, the silver thing out of the way first. All right. But in terms of estate planning concern, some of you might be in the process of it right now. This is very important. This is a tax chart for income that's left inside a retained uh, trust. So if the income inside of a trust, it retained income, hits $14,451 in one year, bingo, you hit the top federal income tax estate bracket. It then keys into a state tax bracket and the county tax bracket in some cases, okay? So you do need to flush all the income coming out of a trust to the beneficiaries, otherwise the retained income will get hit with taxes of this nature. So the idea is they create this tax as a way to try to help the velocity of money, okay? They want the money to continue to run around, all right? So if you left over with an IRA, didn't spend it, they're gonna whack you. 
bottom line. And if um, if they whack you, then guess who gets the IRA? Then the government does, and they make it go. And they make it go where they want to anyway. So, uh, the Patriot Silver Show is for stackers, folks. Come and learn, make new friends, protect what is yours. Learn, be around like-minded people. If we're going to make the Silver Show go, all right, we're going to have to help the help of other podcasters. Okay. So other podcasters have got to talk this up too. We're going to need about 5,000 people to show up in order to get the right economies of scale where we have the good vendors come in. We get the good talks. We get the good speakers. We have great things for you to take home. So one another reason to reach out to other podcasters and see if they broadcast the, the message is to see whether or not they'd be interested in supporting, helping to broadcast and support through their channel, through their audience, the, the Patriot Silver Show for stackers young and old all around the world. Our doors are going to be open to you. And it looks like uh, the doors may be open. Depends upon whether or not we actually get the contract this time, as we did in, the, in Georgia. We yanked away at the last minute. I had no idea what the contract was yanked away. You'll have to talk to Cindy. Cindy at tedspeaks.net is how you reach her. She's a reti- She had just got laid off from her company. And she said, hey, I, this is the kind of work I used to do. I, I'm an event planner. Would you like me to help? I said, heck yeah. So we can't afford to pay you. She said, well, that's fine. I know everybody. I know how to get it done. So... Cindy is volunteering and somebody else said, Hey, you guys have done so much for us. I'd like to make a $5,000 donation in order to help get your mug program and your uh, hat program up and up and running. So to that end, I'd like to thank Steve in California for what you did for that. And the other end, I'd like to thank Matt from Arkansas for what he's done to get us this vibe board. It's still in its way. We've been working at it for a while. We are going to get it in. And when we get it in, it's going to take this whole thing up to another level. Because you're going to need to spin it, slow it down at that point, and you're going to need to stop it. You're going to need to make pictures because we're going to have a blast. I, I, you will understand this. So, folks, some people are talking to me and saying, "You know, Ted, what you're giving us really is a master's degree level in Austrian monetary economics." The ding, that's what I'm trying to do. So, I made 17 of you guys out there, 17 in my group, over the past two and a half years, and it's really funny because to hear Dave, as a construction worker, talk about Austrian monetary economics with a guy with a master's degree in economics and finance that, 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 that subscribed to the Keynesian School of, uh, of Monetary Theory, Dave just beat the living daylights out of me. He, he this guy's a brawler. I mean, in <laughs> you ought to put him in an octagon with somebody once to try to debate him. <laughs> There's going to be blood. <laughs> Dave is Dave's unreal. <laughs> Anyway, the IMF is talking about coming panic in the financial markets. And guess who's speaking about this? Jamie Dimon. Holy cow. The big kahunta. D-I-M-O-N is how he spends his la- spells his last name. If the big... <laughs> you remember the old E.F. Hutton commercial? When E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Okay. Was that, was that who it was? It was. It, was. It, it was Hutton? Okay. Anyway, when uh, Jamie Dimon speaks, I'm listening to because he's got his fingers on a whole lot of different uh, buttons that can make things go in a whole different way. 5G technology is now requiring silver. Let's all stay in this together. Did you know that? So we got hours, not days, remain. Uh, yeah, hours could add up to days and weeks and months and years and whatever else. But I think that if um, you go to qnet.official.net, uh, um, reach out to Margaret Ann. There's something you guys ought to see that's going on. It's still zero hour on this one particular metric that we're watching. Major events are taking shapes that will bring silver to ignition. Our time is coming, folks. If you're either on the bus or forget the bus, you're either on the rocket or you're not on the rocket. And you remember those lines they come up to on the, and just before liftoff, these lines come falling off and it's spewing out uh, some kind of smoke or liquid nitrogen or whatever. Okay, folks. It's being pumped in. It's being pumped in. The bad guys are trying to push it below 28. Are they successful? Are we below 28 right now? I don't think so. I don't think so. We're going to, you know, as well as I do, we're going to have a breakout. The purchasing power is going to shift and we're going to have the best time. I can't wait to give you guys a big hug and handshake and meet all you guys because you helped, you helped make it happen. You really did. I mean, you guys, there's probably, probably more enjoyable things out there than listen to Ted pontificate and bloviate on stuff about the economy and economics and it's dry stuff anyway, right? Well, I don't, I'm trying to put a little humor in it, but there are, you have opportunity costs. There's other things you should be doing. Thanks so much for tuning into this. Make your voice magnified, okay? Magnify your voice. Magnify what you've learned. Get this out. Get other people to carry this message, Okay. 
I'll I'll tone it down if they want me to just say, you know, kumbaya or whatever. I'll sing kumbaya. All right. Let's just get this out on the airwaves. All right. So the IMF is warming about risk to global financial stability. I'm not kidding. It's all here, folks. Okay. Market turmoil. Why are you still in the stock market? It's still at all time highs. Do you see the economic activity as robust as it had been, say, in the, in the roaring 90s or whatever? Come on, guys. Jeez, you know better than this. Over the last six months, global financial security stability risks increased because higher economic risks and uncertainty, falling commodity prices and concerns about China's economy, according to the International Monetary Fund. Well, they're going away. That's the, the IMF is all part of the BIS. It's all one little club. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I've shared this with you before, but um, long time ago, very long time ago, I was uh, tapped to become part of that. And um, I said, no, I didn't want to be a part of that. That was an initiation ceremony that I was uh, in the process of going through. And um, I didn't enjoy it at all. I thought it was ridiculous. It was stupid. And I wasn't going to participate anymore. And I made my feelings widely known. And that was the end of that. So I could have been on the other side. I certainly was trained well enough to be on the other side, um, but I didn't do that. And I'm not going to do that. So, folks, we've been into the, uh, the story here, the, the program for about 45 minutes or so. And I'm getting some pushback from people saying, hey, your shows are too long. Well, so what we've done to, to combat that is we're busting it up a little bit. You'll see these in 20 minute uh, segments so that you can get a little bit more concise uh, information that you're looking to tune into it. But I hope you understand that I've gone through everything I'm telling you and I'm telling you the important stuff more than one time. And I'm telling the other stuff to break the ISO as we bring more and more of it to light that you're on board with it. So folks, you'll notice that some acronyms around. I hope you're picking up on them. If you know, you know, look for it. And nothing can stop what is coming. The acronyms are out there. Take a close look at our, uh, our marking material. Take a close look at our website. See if you can find it. Okay. I tell you what, for the next, um, for the next, 20 minutes okay if you find where if you know you know is hidden or nothing can stop what is coming is hidden for the next five minutes i'll give you a free mug just send got it here it is ted send that into ben at tedspeaks.net that you won the mug challenge for today the ted today is wednesday april 10th 2024 at 12 47 so one, we give you to one o'clock. Somebody came up with five thousand dollars to help us out with this mug program here. Let's see how many can get out blown out the door. You find nothing can stop what is coming, the acronym, or you find if you know you, you if you know you know on anywhere on our stuff, and you have until one o'clock, and we'll send you out a free mug. Just send it where you found, take a snapshot of it, so we know you actually did find it. And no colluding. Come on now, guys. We're trying to keep the price down for everybody. So um, at any rate, don't call your friends. Maybe, hey, get us a free mug. Come on, you know what the deal is. So I hope you had fun. Uh, we are going to go into more conversation about this uh, challenge that I got. Our friends from Canada thinks that their uh, their maple leaf is more popular than than our American silver eagle. You know what? What? It doesn't really matter, folks. I love you up there anyway. I want to come up and visit. I want to go fishing up in your area. So that's Kashukan or Algonquin. Algonquin is up there in Canada. And I understand you guys have some really great northern bike pike up there. I'd like to come up and go fishing. So, folks, let's be friends with everybody. Okay. If you see other channels that are portraying this message, you know they want to carry the truth. If you see other messages not carrying this channel, you ought to ask them why. Because there's nothing harmful about people knowing the truth. I hope you understand that. So until we get together next time, unless something major comes up, which it very well might be between now and Friday, we'll send out an email blast. A couple of y'all are saying you're getting too much correspondence from us. Never heard that happen before. But anyway, whatever you want, we're here. Uh, if you want us to tone it back or whatever, just block us or whatever you want to do. I'm putting it out there. Please help other people see this. The time is nigh. There's not a whole lot of time left. It'll really help us out if you hit the like share and subscribe buttons. We got to get up into these other metrics. We have to get up to 500,000 subscribers, folks. That's where we need to be. There's 300 some million people in the United States, over 8 billion in the world. Let me show you this. It's going to knock off a little bit early here. I want to show you the number of people from around the world, okay, different countries that we're getting requests for information from. I'm not kidding. Australia, Canada, Denmark, Guadalupe, Israel, Netherlands, Nigeria, Poland, Switzerland, Bulgaria, Chesnia, 
Germany, Ireland, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa. They are tuning into Ted Speaks Truth, folks. They want the stuff. They're ordering mugs, too. We just figured out a way to get past. Canada wanted to charge almost $30 in shipping for a mug. I said, forget that. They told me about I shipped it one for free. I'm tired of the nonsense, folks. It's got to stop. Anyway, here's the number of ounces of silver that you got to have. You got to be in the game, okay? Get somewhere on the chart. I don't care where you get on the chart. If you're able to get up in the in the yellow and the green zone, get there. Not a lot of time left. If you're having trouble finding it, reach out to me. I'll help you find it. At the very least, get another price. Shop around. Some of these guys, oh, yeah, I can get them. It might be in a week or two. If it isn't on the shelf, it's not for sale. You can't price something you don't have. Okay, so um, what else do we got to cover? I think we've pretty much hit it all outside of going over what the uh, the most famous coins are in the world. And I think we're going to save that for another time. Keep you guessing. Folks, any suggestions, any comments, please leave them. I love reading the comments from you guys. It really touches my heart. I mean, we we put a lot into this and you know what the deal is. If you want to support us, don't support us. Support Ben for the merchandise and support Nick for the marketing. Got to get the word out. So if you can't support us with a, with a check or whatever or funds, support us with your fingers. So pretty soon you're going to have a white hat on your head. It's going to say Ted Head. And you're going to be part of our army. And I'm not going to ask you to go out there and shoot bullets or whatever. All I'm asking you to do is put your fingers on the keyboard and be a keyboard warrior for getting the word out. Okay. That's what Trump had to have done. Unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to do. We will break through this glass ceiling and we will get the truth out to everybody. If you see a podcaster carrying our channel, support them, folks. If you see a podcaster not supporting our channel, ask them to please have us on. With They host a TED chat, even for 20 minutes. That's not a whole lot of time for TED, but <laughs> probably that much they could deal with because they're not used to it yet. <laughs> you got to get them used to the hot water. <laughs> anyway, folks, I hope you've had a lot of fun. Please reach out to me. We enjoy hearing from you. I love the cards. I like the emails. Uh, some of you are sending cards to us. You figured out how to get my home address. I don't really mind about that. It is what it is. God's in control and he loves you and I do too. Have a good day.